Today we're going to look at the dirty side of pottery. You've made your masterpiece, you've cleaned up your workspace, now you've got a bunch of water and clay. If you pour this straight into your sink, it'll settle out to the bottom over time and block it up and cause you expensive problems. We're going to show you how a clay trap works, how it cleans the water, and then we're going to show you several styles so you can get the one that suits you. Here we have a large clay trap. It's suitable for a, a big class, 15, 20 people all cleaning up. It gets rid of a lot of clay and stops it going down the drain and causing problems. But do you need a big one like this? Do you just need a bucket in the sink or do you need something in between? So the main premise of a clay trap is you've got to give enough time for the clay to settle out. You will notice that this large pieces of clay sink to the bottom really quickly. The fine particles float in the water and take a long time to settle. That's because the big ones have got a small surface area and a lot of gravity pulling them down. They go down really quickly. The fine particles, as if they've got a parachute on them, slowing them down. If there's any turbulence in the water, that's going to lift them up and they're going to continue to float. The finer the clay you want, the longer you have to let it settle out. Once enough clay is settled out, then you can just pour the water off the top and then you get the sediment at the bottom. If it's just pure clay, then you can put it into your recycling. If you've got other stuff mixed in like glaze or soap, then you would throw it out. We'll talk more on what to do with that later. Fortunately, we don't need something as big as a wastewater treatment plant. So we're going to give you some options. We'll start with just a bucket in the sink and build our way up into a continual flow system that can handle big classes. A really easy temporary setup is just to put a um, bucket and a basin in the sink. All the cleanup water goes into the bucket. You can use it for rinsing really dirty stuff before you clean them more. The idea of the basin is just to stop people missing the target. When the water overflows, it will go into the basin, which will slow it again and give you a second chance, and then the water will go down the sink. I use this method when I visit community halls, and we haven't had a problem in five years. At the end of the lesson, you just let it settle for five minutes or so, and then pour off the water on the top, leaving the sludge on the bottom. So if you've just had clay in the lesson, then you can keep the stuff on the bottom for recycling or give it a good stir and then throw it out safely. Once you've finished with it, you want to flush out the pipes. I do this by filling the sink half full and then letting the plug out and that helps any bits and pieces get flushed through the system. The reason why the bucket system works so well is the water is still and you give it enough time for all the clay to settle out. But it's an active system, meaning you need a skilled operator to change the buckets and put them aside and empty them at the right time. So we're going to look at a system where it just works until you have to empty it. So we're going to show you how to slow the water down and give it enough time to settle out before it just goes down the pipe itself. To slow the water down is we're going to add more area. So in this demo you can see the water in the pipe is moving quite quickly as the container gets wider and wider even with the same flow rate the velocity of the water slows down and it takes longer and longer to go up. If you make the container 10 times wider than the pipe then it'll take 10 times longer to travel that distance. Also important is the slow water has less turbulence and the still water will allow more clay to settle out. Interestingly enough, the depth of the container doesn't um, settle out more clay. Its only importance is how often you have to empty it. So if you have a trough that's twice as deep, then you only have to do it every second month instead of every month. So this is a large concrete basin that's been converted into a clay trap. The advantage of this one, we've got the pipe coming straight out from the sink inside. 
the water comes into the first one, all the big particles fall out there. This uh, first weir here slows it down, um, and the water slows down as it goes towards the exit, dropping more and more clay. When you empty it, you can feel how the clay actually gets finer towards the end. This is great for the club because it only has to be emptied once a month. Since we've had it here 15 years, the council have now decided that we need a bit of rain cover in because they don't want rainwater going into the sewage. So here we are in the glaze room. Glazers can cause as much problems as clay. They've got a lot of rocks and powders that'll settle out. So here we've upgraded from a bucket in the sink and we've put the bucket under the sink. The main advantage there is you don't have to teach people how to use it. Here we have the water falling down. All the big bits come out before it goes out the pipe. For this sink we found when both taps were going that we'd get too much flow so we've put this in with some holes to slow the water down and give it time to do its job underneath. On this design we've got a funnel to catch the water. It could have been a bit bigger, but we've put the pipe in a little bit to stop splashing. So to get it out, we've got to lift it up before we pull back. We couldn't put a clay trap outside because by the time this pipe gets outside, it's too close to the ground and we don't have enough height to install anything big enough. So now that we've effectively got all the clay out of the water that we need to, we're going to have to worry about how to get rid of it. You can't always throw it on the lawn. The problem with these continual flow systems is everything ends up there. You can have glaze and hand washing and all sorts of things. I've tried reclaiming this clay. Um, it tended to be very fine and cracked a lot just when you were bending it. also found the smell obnoxious. I tried bleaching it and I tried boiling it. But after a few days, the smell would just come back and the clay wasn't useful. So we're going to drain the water off the top and dry the solids out so that we can throw it in the bin because the council doesn't like liquids going through the rubbish trucks. So you always want to empty your clay trap early. If you, the solids get too high, um, they start flowing out the pipe and you get all your problems again. When you empty it, there's also an idea to siphon the water off the top um, to reveal the solids and then once it's light enough we're going to take this one out and scrape all the muck out into a plaster mould so that it can dry nicely before we throw it out in the bin. All the water we've drained off the top I would just pour back into the trap after we've emptied the solids out. The trap has dried underneath the kiln we can take it out and throw it in the rubbish bin. Again, make sure it's not a liquid. Because we don't want to get the attention of the truck drivers. Before we wrap up, I'm going to show you a few more pictures sent in by friends of different systems to get your engineering juices going. This one here is a um, simple system. It's nice and clean. It's easy to get in and clean it. And it's just a slightly smaller system. Another thing I like, the top of the bucket has a good height above the outlet which allows for a lot of water without overflowing. This one here, we've got a design flaw in it. The plumber didn't quite understand the principles. He put the pipe at the bottom so it would have got blocked up with clay and overflown. He did come fix it for free after that. But the other thing going for this is it's got a nice cover on it and it keeps her chickens and her grandkids out of it. I live in New Zealand so your local and personal situations may be different. There's a lot of things I haven't covered like evaporation, fumes, mosquitoes, bears and squirrels, waterborne diseases, icing over, food and wasting, babies and toddlers, chickens and cows, or local plumbing regulations including pipe sizes, U-bends, permitted discharges local rubbish restrictions, and people sitting on it. So if we didn't cover anything well and you want more details like on how to start a siphon without sucking on it, let us know in the comments. Be sure to like and share with all your friends. Thanks to the Waikato Society of Potters and my friends for letting me use their clay traps.
Okay, that's a wrap. <laughs>